Amen. Well, for the message, turn to Proverbs 31. Great message for Mother's Day. Proverbs 31. And uh, Proverbs 31, the, the virtuous woman uh, spoken of here in Proverbs 31. She does it all. Now, again, this is the superwoman. Uh, this is is uh, the uh, uh, this this is probably Eve before she sent uh, before she fell. This is uh, this is the uh, uh, the uh, example. This is the high uh, high bar that is set. Uh, this is that uh, one which uh, we uh, desire to attain, but uh, yet uh, you know uh, uh, try to get as close as as uh, we can to. And and so God does set a, a high uh, example here. Uh, speaking of a, a virtuous woman, and yet many of these characteristics we find uh, in, in in mothers, and and uh, just kind of a a reminder of all that they do uh, in and have done in our lives for us, and and uh, the uh, uh, the important responsibility uh, of uh, mothers. I, I believe the greatest calling that uh, that can be fulfilled uh, in, in, and for our children is is a mother's uh, calling, and. And here in, in an important calling, but uh, beginning here in this passage in verse number 10 and, and, and the Bible just says here in verse 10, uh, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ship, uh, ships. She bringeth forth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth out, uh, not out, by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and uh, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise, arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. The virtuous woman. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, for uh, being our God, and even in the Psalms, as you state, that if our mother or father should forsake us, that you would be a mother and a father to us. And Lord, we know that all the characteristics, whether it be mother or father, uh, that, uh, uh, Lord, our every good gift cometh from above. And, uh, Lord, how that uh, you uh, uh, just uh, gift uh, moms for the office that you've called them to and enable them, uh, Lord, in, in uh, carrying out that office. And, Father, we uh, just come to give you uh, the thanks for that today and and uh, Lord just to lift up uh, again the office of motherhood and and uh, Lord how important uh, it is to uh, our nation to our uh, church to our community to our homes I I just pray Lord that you would uh, again just bless as we look at a few things out of this passage today and and uh, Lord thank you for uh, for uh, both of my moms I, I just thank you Lord for uh, their uh, uh, continued part of my life it's in jesus name we pray amen uh, the virtuous woman the bible says her price is far above uh and uh, notice uh you know uh, there in, back in in verse 10 uh for her price is far above 
uh, rubies and and uh, did a little bit of studying on rubies and and uh, because God gives the comparison and and uh, to uh, uh, say you know how how valuable rubies are well uh, you know their 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 price is far uh, above uh, rubies and uh, a ruby if if you don't know and and uh, uh, Wikipedia says a ruby is a pink to blood red colored gemstone uh, a variety of the uh, mineral corundum ruby is one of the traditional cardinal gems and uh, i didn't realize but uh, ruby is actually the second hardest uh, next only to uh, to diamonds and uh, but uh, with with the uh, ruby uh, it's uh, one of the cardinal gems uh, together with amethyst sapphire emerald and diamond uh, the word ruby comes from the uh, from ruber it's a latin term which means red and uh, uh, the uh, color of the ruby is due to an element called chromium uh, but uh, uh, rubies are very rare uh, in fact uh, today if you go and buy one it's going to cost you in the thousands of dollars uh, and uh, uh, to, to get a, a genuine ruby now there are lab created rubies they actually can grow rubies in a lab environment with uh, chemicals and things to produce them and so most of the rubies you actually go and buy today in jewelry uh, if it says it's a uh, you know it is uh, you know a, a ruby uh, it'll say somewhere lab produced or something in the writing of it uh, it is a ruby but uh, but uh, again it's not a genuine uh, ruby uh, but uh, because those uh, you know again are up into like uh, seven eight thousand dollars for a small you know small one uh, that you get on a, a piece of jewelry uh, or they're a composite uh, a composite meaning they take pieces of rubies and put them together uh, and uh, they uh, with uh, with the uh, glues and whatever that uh, they make today that you can't even see when you put them together they actually look like one gem but it's not uh, really uh, one uh, but uh, just looked up I had never heard of it before but the sunrise ruby uh, it's the most valuable ruby and uh, it was just uh, sold and and uh, look at this, but it was it was uh, uh, 30 million, 30 point four two million dollars. I don't know if it says thirty million four hundred and twenty thousand or something like that. But it's it's a lot of money. Thirty million dollar ruby. And uh, it was it was sold to an anonymous buyer. I'd probably want to be anonymous, too, if I bought a thirty million dollar gem that's about that big worth 30 million dollars and and uh, because you'd kind of be the target of thieves i think if you got it but uh, but uh, anyway the most uh, most valuable uh, the the only uh, gem more valuable than that of course is the diamond uh, but uh, anyway just uh, uh, just to consider the the most valuable the bible just says here uh, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies and uh, uh a virtuous a woman. The word virtuous means chaste, morally good, abstaining from vice, being in conformity of the divine law. And uh, of course, uh, you know, speaking of the, the uh, virtuous woman he's speaking of, uh, this is the model. This is uh, is the uh, uh, the uh, highest standard that uh, is set. And and of course, the, the, the uh, desire to uh, to aim towards the goal the, uh, but uh, of uh, of women, but a virtuous woman. Look at Proverbs 30. I was just in studying Proverbs 31, glanced over and 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 uh, just uh, saw in this. Uh, but uh, verse number 21, uh, the Bible says for three things, the earth is disquieted. And for four, which it cannot bear. In other words, uh, you know, those those kinds of things you can't keep your mouth shut. This earth is is just upset about uh, it says uh, for a servant when he reigneth. Uh, why servants are supposed to serve. Right. But uh, and a fool when he is filled with meat. Uh, in verse 23 for an odious woman when she is married. And I had to look up that odious woman. What's an odious woman? You probably know uh, odious woman. Uh, abhorrent abominable appalling awful disgusting distasteful dreadful evil foul and uh, when an odious woman uh, gets uh, gets married obviously the the uh, contrast with a virtuous woman would be an odious woman uh, the opposite uh, you know uh, uh, extreme that uh, you can go to and and uh, of course uh, uh, you know uh, moms are uh, somewhere in between 
uh, in, uh, uh, because, uh, again, uh, measuring up the perfection would be the, uh, the uh, uh, virtuous woman we'll speaking of in, in Proverbs 31. And, and of course, the uh, other uh, extreme would be there in Proverbs chapter 30, the odious uh, woman. But uh, just speaking of, uh, you know, this, uh, this virtuous woman, uh, this, this quote by Abraham Lincoln, he said, I remember my mother's prayers and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. And uh, you can't put a price uh, on uh, a godly mom uh, that uh, loves the Lord and, and a mom that is, is uh, even after her children are grown up and gone, still praying for them, still seeking God uh, on their behalf. And, and uh, nobody will love you uh, like, like mom will. And, and uh, the Bible just speaks of how valuable a virtuous woman is. And uh, just uh, hadn't seen this before, but looking up, actually rubies are, are, uh, are only mentioned a few places in Scripture. Uh, but uh, if you would, just flip over to Job. Uh, we're in Proverbs, so just two books over, you'll find the book of Job, chapter number 28. And in the places where rubies are mentioned, it's always in regards to wisdom. Or not always, there's one place uh, in uh, in the prophets where it, it's uh, mentioned in a description because of its red color. But uh, but the other uh, four places that it's mentioned, it's it's mentioned in regards to wisdom. And here uh, Job is just talking about uh, the blessing of God's wisdom, that we can have God's wisdom. You can search this world and not find God's wisdom, but God gives it to us uh, in his word. And uh, here in, in uh, Job chapter 28 and uh, verse verse number 14. And just kind of a, a, a blessed passage when you read through and it gives you a, an appreciation for the word of God. Because uh, we could never come to the conclusion that God's word comes to apart from God's word. And uh, no matter how how wise man gets and how much we search and how many experiments we run, uh, you know, his ways are not our ways. And uh, uh, but in expressing just the the value uh, of the word of God. And here in in a Proverbs chapter, I mean, in, in Job chapter 28, verse 14, the Bible says the depth saith it is not in me and the sea saith it is not with me. Uh, speaking of wisdom, again, if you go back and and uh, God's wisdom, it says in verse 15, it cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. In other words, it's it's better than gold. It's better than uh, you, you can't uh, purchase it uh, with silver. It can't cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, uh, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. I mean, you, you can't even begin to value. You can't even use those. Uh, to a place of value you can't even compare say well wisdom is better than uh, you know these Uh, it's not even close and it says the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold Uh, verse 18 no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls notice here he says for the price of wisdom is above rubies and so if you understand the context he says gold pearls, uh, you know, all these gems and stuff. You can't even compare it with those, but you can compare it with rubies. And it says, but the price is, uh, you know, uh, above rubies and and the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Uh, and, uh, and so when you come to God's wisdom, it says you, you can't use anything on this earth to compare it with except rubies. And uh, rubies must have been pretty valuable. In uh, uh, you know Old Testament times, uh, and uh, I mean he 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 expresses here rubies they're they're at a higher standard than gold, silver, pearls, diamonds. I mean all uh, you know other gems put together, and and uh, and so it must have been a a, a highly prized uh, gem more more so than uh, than it is today. Uh, with uh, with rubies again may, might might be much because of the laboratory uh, you know uh, uh, grown ones and such but uh, but anyway just the uh, the uh, value that he places on rubies understand what God says when he speaks of this virtuous woman it says her price is far above uh, rubies and and uh, uh, Proverbs three fifteen says she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not compared to her. Proverbs 8, 11, for wisdom is better than rubies and all things that may be desired are not to be compared uh, to it. And, and uh, Proverbs 12, 4, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband 
But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Proverbs 18.22, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And then Proverbs 19.14, House and riches are the inheritance of fathers. And a prudent wife is from the Lord. And uh, uh, so uh, fathers, they can give you houses and riches, right? But a, a prudent wife, that only comes from God. Uh, she only comes from God. Uh, who can find her? That means it's rare. Uh, why would he compare it to rubies? There's, there's actually only a few places in the world you can find rubies. Uh, there's more places you can find diamonds in the world than there is rubies. And, uh, uh, and so which, which makes them uh, rare. But uh, uh, again, to uh, look at who, uh, a virtuous woman, who, who can uh, find her? Notice, if you would, uh, verse 11 uh, in, uh, whoops, I'm still, I'm over Job. But back at, at Proverbs uh, chapter 31, verse number 11. Proverbs 31, verse number 11, the Bible says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. And uh, kind of interesting he uses spoil. Spoil is that which you go out and you take. Uh, usually it's taken by force. Go out and conquer and take it. Uh, but it says he has no need of, of spoil. He, he's content. He's happy uh, with what he's got if he's got a virtuous wife. And, and, uh, and the Bible says in verse 12, She will do him good. And not evil all the days of his life. Uh, I am so thankful my kids have them all. And uh, uh, poor kids if they just had dad. Because uh, he's not around too much. But uh, just to, uh, think of the, uh, the love that mom has. She, she often makes so many sacrifices for her children. And, and uh, just the, uh, the part that she plays in their life that, uh, that I could could never uh, fulfill those things and and god does uh you know a gift a man and god does gift a a mother and both mother and father have an important role uh in uh, in the family and the the uh the uh, raising of children and and uh, but uh just uh, looking at the bible says here the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need uh, of spoil I didn't know this and lots of things I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know a lot when you start studying things out. Boy, I don't mu know much, but uh, but uh, uh, rubies actually symbolize power and protection. That's uh, kind of the gem of power and protection. The Bible says her price is far above rubies and and uh, but uh, rubies symbolize power and protection uh, when worn as a talisman. They used to, uh, you know, wear them as uh, good luck charms, in other words. Uh, soldiers would rubies were believed uh, to help protect warriors in battles kind of understand why uh, you know they'd win a battle and they would go out and they'd come home with all this plunder it's like who what kind of soldier takes all of his money and everything into battle I don't get that but uh, well they'd have a lot of these uh, like rubies decorating and, and different uh, you know uh, things on their uh, their uh, uh, their uh, shields and whatever to uh, to uh, you know good luck and such but it's a picture of of uh, uh, power and protection and uh, uh, look at, uh, well, you don't have to turn there, but you, you know the account. James went to it a little bit today, but uh, Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says God created man. And he said, it is not good that man should dwell alone. You know, you read through the Bible and it says day one, it was good. Day two, it was good. Day three, it was good. Day four, it was good. Day five, it was good. But he got to day six. And uh, he uh, kind of uh, manifests the day six and, and uh, blows it up for us to see a, a glimpse of all that took place in day six. And and uh, uh, he uh, uh, he created, uh, you know, uh, in, in Genesis one, it says day six, he created man and, and all the, the the living things upon the, the earth. And, and it was good. But before he ever said that, if you go to, to Genesis, uh, you know, chapter number two, uh, it says first he created before he created uh, the woman, he created the man. And he said, it is not good that man dwell alone. Uh, and uh, I believe God was looking forward to uh, Adam and Eve's kids or Adam's. Well, you can't have 
kids with Eve too. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, to the children and saying it's it's not good that man dwells alone. But uh, you know that uh, uh, he would uh, make him. And the Bible says a help meet. Uh, help meet and I'm not to distract uh, to track this morning from the uh, the office of uh, of of men and in, in the home and the place that they have as as a husband and such but you read through uh, Genesis chapter number 31 and uh, uh, all the husband gets to do is sit in the gate right uh, that's all he gets to do in this passage I mean she does it all uh, you know and, and uh, I mean you look at the virtuous woman it sounds more like she's taking care of him than he's taking care of her doesn't it uh, is that the way it is in your home? It's the way it is in my home. And, uh, you, you know, we, uh, we we lift up the uh, responsibility. And the Bible says we're supposed to love our wives as our own flesh. And, of course, uh, chivalry, chivalry and, and uh, you know, those. Uh, but, uh, you know, when it, when it, it comes down, who, who's taking care of who? Well, in a good marriage relationship, you're taking care of each other. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you, you begin to look at this this account in, in chapter 31 and and, uh, uh, you know, she's she's able to do it all. The Bible says to be a help meet. Uh, a help meet. And uh, she is the completer. Uh, there's there's uh, inadequacies in men. And so God uh, has blessed this world uh, with women to uh, to uh, make up those inadequacies and. And uh, and so uh, together uh, we're a whole, uh, as the Bible says in the marriage, to become one uh, as a, as a team. Uh, we complete uh, one another. The uh, the uh, virtuous woman, as you go through and read, uh, you know, and so the Bible just says here, it says the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need uh, of spoil. It is amazing. Those that are uh, what do they call male chauvinists. Uh, that uh, think that a, a woman is less than a man and and uh, just uh, uh, you have a baby then uh, I don't know that's uh, you know uh, uh, they say if 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 uh, if God had had uh, uh, blessed men to get to be the one to bear children then you'd only have one uh, why because uh, we don't have the love of compassion enough we know that hurt that was miserable that was a rough nine months I'm not ever doing that again but moms, they turn around next year and they're saying, okay, uh, one's not enough. Uh, I want, uh, you know, I was uh, looking at uh, the uh, Johnsons that were recently here. You know, all their kids are young. Did you see the kids they had here? Uh, young, energetic kids. They wore me out just watching them. Uh, she's pregnant with her sixth. And uh, they ask us to pray for their uh, son because he's crying. He's in tears when he found out she was going to be a girl. Because uh, now he's going to have five sisters instead of four. And, and he wants a brother. And so uh, you remember to pray for the Johnson son. He's, uh, he's, just, uh, he, he's upset about this uh, s- new sister coming into the house. And, and uh, Miss Darlene says, well, what about five brothers and one, one girl? I mean, the other side around. But, uh, you know, again, to, uh, to uh, think of, uh, you know, another, uh, another sister. But, but again, to uh, just uh, consider, I mean, you look through here, the, the virtuous woman, all that she takes care of and does for the, uh, the family and for the home. And, and, and yet uh, sometimes is, is given a, a second place standing. Uh, and uh, that is not God's plan. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible lifts up uh, the responsibility and the role. Uh, it, it is not good that a man dwell alone. Uh, and so uh, God put him into a sleep and took his rib and from that made uh, woman. And as Brother James shared, she is the mother of all living. Uh, you know, uh, if it hadn't been for the woman, there wouldn't have been a savior. Uh, praise the Lord for, for Jesus' mom. Uh, and grandma and great grandma and on on back. But, uh, you know, it was through uh, the uh, uh, fruit of the woman that the Savior could come. If it had come from a man, would have been a sinner. Uh, but uh, because of uh, of God uh, overshadowing uh, and a virgin bearing a child, uh, we could have a perfect uh, child to come into this world. God's son uh, to go to a cross and to die uh, for our sins and and uh, the help Proverbs 14 one says every wise woman buildeth her house. But a foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Uh, reading through the book.
books of first and second kings here recently and and uh, second kings 11 is reminded of this uh ahaziah was king and anyway he dies and uh his mom who is still living athaliah she decides she wants to be queen uh now normally the firstborn son uh of ahaziah would become the the king but she didn't want that so what she did she went out and killed all of her grandkids uh, she had them all put to death, but she missed one. Uh, it was as as God had had uh, saved one to uh, to uh, continue on the line of David. But uh, but she went out to uh, kill every one of them. Uh, this I found this written. It says the greatest destroyer of peace is abortion. Because if a mother can kill her own child. What is left for me? to kill you and you to kill me. Uh, I mean, if we can go to the point where a a mother who loves uh, a child like nobody else, if if it can go to a place in a society where a mother will take the life of her child, uh, what hope is there? I read this and just, uh, again, the Office of Motherhood. Jackie Kennedy don't know a lot about Jackie Kennedy. She was the first lady. She was the, uh, the uh, president's, uh, Kennedy's wife. But uh, Jackie Kennedy said, I will be a wife and mother first, then first lady. And uh, she lifted up her role as a wife and a mother is more important than being the first lady of the United States of America. And uh, I believe that's where it ought to be. Uh, that's God's design. The the most important role uh, that a a Christian woman can fulfill uh, is first to her children uh, and to her husband and to her home. Uh, And uh, uh, it is a worthy profession uh, and uh, worthy of praise. Uh, If you would notice verse 28, verse 28. Proverbs 31. Verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. And uh, mom gets all the credit, doesn't she? Well, she deserves it. Amen. And uh, dads, well, that's, you know, Father's Day, that's a, that's a day we we lift up dads too. But, uh, you know, it's uh, as, as children, they got a, a special place for mom. Uh, and all the time and the sacrifice and the uh, resources that she pours into those children uh, in raising them. And much of that, uh, Dad probably wouldn't have the patience uh, and the compassion for. But uh, both important uh, roles to be fulfilled uh, in the home. Uh, Here in verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also he praiseth her. And many times growing up, kids, every one of us were kids at one time, right? Uh, what did I say? Everybody's got a mom. Uh, how involved your mom was in your life, you know, that's different. But uh, uh, just growing up as we think, you know, we're kind of thankless, aren't we? Uh, it's It's not very often that you find a child who, uh, you know, on a regular basis, goes to mom and say, thank you for all the sacrifices you make. Uh, usually it's demanding more, right? That's just what kids do when they grow up. I mean, that's part of being a, a kid. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, why isn't my, uh, you know, a laundry done? Uh, well, you got two hands, you can do it yourself. But your mom, uh, you know, and... Uh, uh, you're, you're supposed to do that, right? Uh, you're supposed to do those things. And, and, uh, but uh, it's just kind of, as, as kids growing up, we're just kind of thankless. Not until you get later, uh, many times until you get your own kids. And you begin to see what takes place in order to raise uh, our children. We just kind of expect, don't we? Uh, Mom and Dad love me. They're going to take care of me. They're going to provide everything for me. They're going to keep me safe. Uh, and... Uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, I can't remember a time anyway. Josiah hasn't come to me, reminded me to pay the electric bill yet, have you? 
Uh, no, he just plugs his computer into it and expects it to be uh, working. The bill has has been paid, and uh, but one time soon, he's going to have to be worried about did the electric bill get paid, and uh, that time is is coming. But uh, uh, but so far, not uh, you know we just take a lot for granted, don't we? Uh, and and yet, mom and dad see that it's all taken care of. Growing up, just thinking of all the things that they've done. Uh, praise the Lord. Verse number thirty. The Bible says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Uh, and those usually go with age, don't they? And with having children and what it does to the body and, and such. But favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Billy Sunday said there is nothing in the world of art like the songs mothers used to sing. And uh, this one of the greatest gifts God gave to man is mothers. The greatest gift God can give to mothers is salvation. Uh, to give them eternal life. Uh, I praise the Lord for God. And for God fearing mothers. Uh, those who love the Lord and know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And I feel like, and I can liken, I, I don't know who Godfrey Wynn is, but he just says this, no man succeeds without a good woman behind him. You've heard that, right? Uh, no man succeeds without a good woman behind him. Wife or mother. If it is both, he is twice blessed indeed. I'm twice blessed. Uh, I got mom behind me, and I got a great wife uh, who's a mom to me, and a wife and a mother to my children. My heart can safely trust in her. Uh, may we praise God for mothers. Let's stand as we have the invitation. Thank you, moms, for taking seriously the role and the calling that God has upon your lives. And whether appreciated for it or not, as far as men concern, understand God. Uh, one day you'll stand before Him. And there'll be gold, silver, and precious stones uh, for all those sacrifices, all those things that you made for your children. And yet looking back, you, you say, well, they weren't really sacrifices. That's love. Uh, that's a love that God put in you. And praise the Lord that you're, uh, you fear the Lord and that you want to come today and to honor Him. Uh, what a testimony for your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren to have a have a mom or a grandma that fears the Lord. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, uh, I'd encourage you to get the greatest gift. Uh, but as we have this invitation today, maybe you take some time and just give thanks to the Lord for mom. Uh, whether your mom is here or whether your mom is there, uh, take time to give thanks that all that that she's done in your life and thank the lord for putting her in your life heavenly father I just want to thank you for uh, this day thank you for mother's day i uh, just pray as as a nation as we set aside a day to give praise to mom uh, lord to uh, reflect on and consider all that mom is to us that uh, lord we not be a, a thankless people uh, but, Lord, that our uh, praise would go first to you for uh, equipping and enabling and, and uh, creating the, the office of motherhood and seeing our needs. Uh, Lord, I'm so thankful that uh, looking upon Adam, you decided it was not good that man dwell alone. And you made that help me for him. Uh, Father, I just want to pray that uh, if there is a mom uh, or anyone here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, uh, Lord, today they might call upon you and ask you to save them. 
but for those of us that are saved, Lord, that uh, again, all glory would go to you. Uh, but thank you for the moms that you've put in our church and the moms you've put in our lives and uh, in our homes. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen.